it's yeah uh, it's begin yeah okay cool so yeah so this was uh, the configuration that we seen last time um you know this picks up from the json schema where we left off so uh, i'll just put in some values so the message would be hello world okay okay not that yeah so hello world put a maximum number of data say 5 and launch time out seconds 4 and ssh tcp no delay i think it's a part of the configuration and you hit submit so yeah this was the page that you you guys did not see so this is these are two actually editors so once he hits the you know generate configuration button he'll get two um, editor so one editor displays the configuration that we just entered so messages hello world you have such values and stuff and this is the schema that we plan to generate so this will be the jcas schema and it will give users the option to enter so suppose if i have forgotten some configuration i want to customize it i will be allowed to customize it here so this editor is an open source editor it's an as editor and it gives you the gives quite a lot of flexibility in what you want to put in and what you want to configure so this will be the uh, initial uh, jcas qml and the second one that we have to generate is this one the packager configuration i mean this is the this is the, this is the one that goes into the cwp the custom var package to be able to generate the custom var package now this one i have just picked up as an example from uh, oleg's um, from oleg the uh, uh, repository and as you can see in the html url right up here that uh, you can see example.yml so it's picked up from uh, yeah, from uh, oleg's repository uh, now we would want to generate this because obviously you cannot just generate any sample yml or we can put in some default plugin as a you know as a base but yeah we would like to generate this from all of the plugins right now this is just hard coded in the back end i'll be going over the code in a few minutes so i'm just showing you the demo first so that we know what's happening in the front end so we got to generate this so using the plugins group id artifacts and i'm guessing that we can do this using the you know the plugins that he configures at the start you know he can just go in here and uh, configure some of the plugins um one second i think i'll just yes. so the uh, there's two there's two below uh texas car is editable right i'm sorry i didn't understand i, didn't I mean uh there's two yaml uh, yaml text yeah, yeah, yeah. box yeah. are editable right yes both are editable so if at all you okay. want to edit something here like you want to put in say this is you don't want this to be you want this to be false you can put this to be true yeah so this is editable completely so after we generate this you know the user can edit as much as he wants to edit um so okay so once we generate this the user has around 1 2 3 4 5 options 1 2 oh yeah four options so he has four option to uh download whatever he want so initially he can download the jcas qml so as soon as i hit download jcas qml you can see on the bottom left i have the cas qml dot uh, yml generated so this is generated from here whatever the user has entered here he can easily just download it and i open it up in my editor you can see what we just entered is uh, picked up here okay so that's the first thing that he can do he can uh, download the jcas yml what another thing you can do is download the var file now downloading now as you can see i'm just going to open up my terminal here this is the server that's running um okay so when i hit download var file um as you can see you should be able to see it yeah you can see the terminal right here uh, it starts the generation of the var file so i've included the library inside and this var file generation takes quite a long time because i'm not sure how the cwe works internally but the var file generation takes quite a bit of time so when he hits download var file it starts building and once the build is complete once it has uh, done all the of file pulling it will uh, give you the option just like it had to uh, i mean give me the jcas yml it just gives you the option to download it so i'm not going to wait for the entire download because it takes yeah obviously the jcas it gives you an error because uh, jcas yml is not defined uh, i've just downloaded this and i'm not put it in the correct position so obviously the custom var package won't work but yeah take my word it it does download the uh, var package Yeah. Uh, so two things done, and you can also give the option to download the Docker file. So I, CWP also generates a Docker file, and once the generation is complete, you can just hit download Docker file, and the Docker file also will be downloaded. Okay. So these are the three main options. I mean that we discussed in our POC at the start of the project. So JCAS QML, WAR file, and the Docker file. These were the three things that we needed to have in our uh, in our in our project. and that those three things are there uh, this one takes a bit of a concern wafa because it takes a lot of time to download so we'll have to come up with a way to you know uh, short this time out time or whatever but first i'll just be into the poc so after this i'm talk not talking about the pull request right now because that's a bit of a uh, another feature that i'll talk about 
So yeah, the next option that Rick had demanded in the last and uh, demanded in the sense suggested in the last video that we have is the pre-built configuration. So yeah, these are the pre-built config. I picked it up from the formula. Uh, I think Nick's library, uh, Nick's uh, repository has all of these uh, formulas. So I've picked out all of these formulas. I've just put them in, you know, just uh, most used, high rated, and they're just arbitrary. They are not. They don't actually mean what they mean. Um, so we could have something like this, where the user is on a set of configurations that are popular, most used, highly rated, and he can, you know, uh, he'll get the name. Uh, I didn't put the description because I think the libraries don't mention the repository doesn't have a description for each of these things. If you had a readme, I could have included each of them here. So that's not there. So I've left it blank for now. Um, but yeah, as you can see, you have these three options where you will have all of the three, you know, uh, ways to pick up configurations. And the other thing that you can have is right on top is config, uh, what configuration are you searching for? You can have a search button. I'm not too sure if you can see properly, but yeah, search button is right on the top. I'm not in the search function is not implemented. So if you put it, it doesn't come up. But yeah, you can have a search bar where you enter maybe configuration as code and it will show up all of the, uh, you know, uh, configurations that are already there. Um, you can pick and, you know, choose. So right here, if you click view config, it will take you to the, yeah. So if you can see, it has pulled in our previous JKS YML file and it has pulled in this library. So uh, like uh, repository uh, configuration. So as you can see, zh.yml, uh, this was the one that is actually print in the uh, in the repository. So as you can see, his entire configuration is uploaded and the user can just enter whatever version he wants to enter, say 2 point, whatever, 1, 4 point, 1 point, 4 zero, whatever. So this gives us a cool, neat feature. You can see with the other configurations as well. If you see the CAS plus pipeline plus KHS, Kubernetes one, you can have that one also. So it, it immediately enters the name of the YML so the user is not confused as to why YML is being loaded. And he can entirely, you know, edit and download whatever. So if he downloads it, you will get this entire one again. Uh, probably I've not added a feature to, you know, download this file as well, the packager, but I don't see the point of downloading that because anyways, he's going to have to construct the var on his own. So I don't see the point of downloading this one. But yeah, if you want, you can just have this one as well. So this is the other one, um, as you can see. So if let's choose any one out of this. So Blue Ocean plus multi branch pipeline. Cool. Uh, so if you can see this, uh, you have the create pull request feature. So now when you click create pull request, it'll give you two options. Uh, for now, um, I want to tell you how this feature is designed. Um, so what I have done is I have a bot that uh, I think it's on sandbox. Yeah. Just give me a second. I'll show it to you. Yeah, it is called the Jenkins Checks API bot. So the Jenkins Checks API bot was created actually for my previous demo that I was showing to um, when the GSOC community bonding was going on. So this is the bot. It's an app actually. So Jenkins Check API, we can rename this to Jenkins Custom Distribution Service. So what this app does is on behalf of the user, it will create a request in the Jenkins repository as we discussed. Because, uh, initially, I mean, you could always obviously support private configurations, but initially we would love to have them at least save the configurations to the GitHub repository. So what I've done is the Jenkins Checks API app just creates a pull request for us with the contents of whatever we want into a repository. So now I've just used Sandbox. So Sandbox is just a Sandbox test repository. So what I'll do here is I'll show you on the front end, I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in the pull request description. So this pull request is purely for demo purposes. Purposes. And the branch name is, you know, uh, maybe new branch demo. I'm not too sure how this will work. But let's hit submit. And Okay. So yeah, it reload the page and it'll give us, so as you can see here, voila, we've got the pull request link as well. So when you click the pull request link, it'll take you to the pull request page, which is, yeah, here it is. So this PR is purely for demo purposes. And if you see the files changed, up, yeah, you have the entire, uh, you know, the pull request with the entire package of configuration and you can have the JCAS YML, I've not put it here, but you can have that as well. So, so this creates the pull request. And then once the maintainers approve this, we merged into the main repository. Um, you can even give the pull request uh, a title change. That's just a minor feature, but yeah, you can have this configured as well. And you can have the author configured as well. So then the author doesn't become Jenkins Checks API. It becomes maybe Christian or maybe. So uh, it depends on whatever the user wants to enter. So let's go back to the local host. Yeah, front end one. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's about it for the demo. Um, so you can even create pull request from here with their description and this, and you can submit that. So yeah, that's just a prototype of what we plan for the entire application to maybe look like. So any thoughts, any ideas, opinion, fire away, I've been talking on for too long. Um, this 
it's all mm. it, it's awesome uh demo i think it's it's great mm -hmm. oh, how do you yep. think uh christy yeah i thought it looked pretty interesting too um being able to see everything and like it, it just being able to hit the button and yeah that's cool <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so um, that was for the demo. This was maybe obviously you got to improve it on a large scale, but yeah, this was just oh, yeah. a prototype. Yeah, just on the exactly. Outcome. Yeah, it's like, a thing. it's like we've got plenty of time in the coding phases um, to be able to, you know, improve or you know, if you want to polish or like actually if you're polishing and figuring out how. Um, so there's a lot of spaghetti code in it. It's not it's not uh, built for maintainability purposes. But yeah, I just exactly. got in a POC within a week. Yeah. So uh, some of the questions that we would like to address that I've added in the agenda before we, you know, before we go on to the next step. Okay. So so currently I've just been using pure vanilla JavaScript. I'm not a front end person. So what is your opinion on just using plain JS other than any framework? It keeps it lightweight and maybe encourage people to contribute as well. What do you think? Like instead of using React Angular. Any thoughts on that? Uh, yep, go ahead. Rick. Um, currently, I think uh, mm, uh, it, it's totally okay to use plant JS rather than any other framework mm -hmm. um, because there, there, is, there isn't too much. Since this do. Okay. Especially it's uh, just a POC project. Uh, the most thing is we don't need to spend too too much uh, uh, time on this project until we have. Uh, uh real project i think no, no, I, I was talking about the real one and no no I, I think you misunderstood my question um for the for the actual one do you prefer using any front-end framework for the actual project and for the real one do you think it is i mean uh currently we we just uh, mm, do some research on this area uh so your question is uh do we need a yes framework in the <laughs> yeah. actual project yep yep that's my concern yeah. um so my opinion is that uh, uh you can do some research like uh, uh if if you can hunt um like using uh, plant yes is totally okay so you don't need to uh use a, a, a any other framework but if uh, if you met some technical problems which you which need to uh which is not uh, uh very easy to resolve uh by plant yes then you might need to choose the JS framework. Okay, cool. Thanks. Rick, right. I'm almost of the opinion that you should use a framework. Um, I actually think that would encourage more people to work on it than if you just use plain JS. Um, and I know that sometimes a common complaint about some of the Jenkins stuff is that all the UI pieces feel very outdated. And so being able to use a front end would help make sure that you don't have to create elements from scratch. And it would just might end up making um, the work of like actually putting the front end together easier than spending a lot of time working in individual components to make things that you can get from a framework fairly easily. And then it can be to focus on the more interesting problem of trying to get the, um, the YAML to work. 
Yeah, I think uh, uh, I um, I have same uh thoughts with Christine. Uh, we need to leverage the benefits from um, those plans or just framework, um, especially uh, especially on current state. If you think uh, you can uh you can implement some uh, POC feature uh in plant yes so you just do it or if you think you can choose the JS framework uh, uh, I think it's okay. Um but you need you still need to consider uh I think in the most cases, most cases you still need to choose the JS framework in the actual uh, project. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely fine. You know, uh, I was just asking because, yeah, it would be better for me to you know get an idea before we actually start and you know otherwise scrap it and then start again. So yeah, perfect. Uh, so if that, that's the conclusion. You know, then I agree. I mean, yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna. Try. I'm not gonna add the conclusion right now. Just put it so that we can move on to the meeting and not get stuck up on this one. Framework. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I think the last meeting when Rick wasn't there, uh, no, I think he was there. I'm sorry. Uh, how do we handle the update of plugins? Um, I couldn't understand it the last time. Maybe you could provide me some insight on this. So should it just be included in the custom package configuration? I mean here, or how is the update of plugins handled? Could Someone explain to me. I'm a bit confused. There. Anyone question, Rick? Mm. Do I need to submit any patches to custom to the plugin installation manager? I need? Uh, this is a tough question. Uh, I, I, I make some. Um, I I did I didn't have I didn't uh, I can't give you a, a specific uh, answer on uh, about this because I try to uh, do some research on Jacob's Bermuda project. Uh, um, there are too many Jacob's plugins uh, exist, so. Um, Maybe you, maybe it can be your next uh, POC feature, like uh, uh, in your um, page, you can allow user to choose some plugins and uh, then we start to think, think about the, the worsen problem uh, deeply. Uh, okay. But uh, I think uh, uh, we still need to let the user to choose the version, the plugin and the version. Um, yep. So yeah, you can choose it currently, right? I mean, we should we because here you can see if you can see here, you can still edit the version. So if it's one point one, you can do it two point one. I mean, uh, please go back to the home page. Yeah, the, there is no to choose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, in this page, uh, uh, you 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 need to give some options uh, that user can choose. For example, um, users can choose a Kubernetes plugin or SSH agent plugins or other plugins. I think Oleg, Oleg suggested that we should just pick up the latest version uh, in the chat. I think if you read it, uh, oh, Hangouts is empty. Right, because I will say that if you start getting to like different versions of plugins and like having to try to, it might be confusing. One second. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, well, so, yeah, so what were you saying this time? I'm so sorry. Uh, could you just tell me? I'll write it down. You mean that if we use different versions of plugins, it would become difficult to manage. So, 
could we just pick up the latest version yes it's it's very difficult to uh, to make sure all those plugins are compatible right i was like we had a whole project last summer <laughs> kind of trying to deal with the dependency matrix of um, versions of plugins and like eventually it was supposed to be pulled into um, jcask in order to like be able to see like download specific versions and like their dependencies i don't think it's bad right now to just default to the most recent version because that's what jenkins behavior is going to be whenever you decide to install certain plugins anyway it's going to take whatever the newest pieces are and then we can try to figure out how to leverage everything else i i don't know if we that's the thing about this i don't know if we need to really like solve the the world here with like trying to do dependencies um but i think for the initial round of trying to figure this out we should just start with whatever's latest and then work to specifying numbers and then um seeing if that's going to change just yeah. start so and build. Would we just yep, choose the latest plugins right yeah, because I, I can imagine that if this is this is just being read from like it, basically you're taking the configuration from a certain place mm -hmm. in the palm, right? Like it's gonna yeah, be yeah. yeah, so if you have a version um you'll just be able to download that specific palm and then I we won't worry about trying to uh Mm -hmm, download yeah. you know like all its dependencies and like you know try to do everything we'll just say like whatever is specified in the file is like what you actually want but let's start with just latest for now and then we can just kind of try to build just a, maybe a feature in mind but i don't know it feels like phase like end of phase one phase two work to me yep. okay cool uh so yeah that, that's completely fine i mean so okay, uh, cool. just <laughs> Yeah, default would be to just choose the latest plugin, and then as and when we finish that, I mean, attain a certain level at least of comfort in using that for now. And then after when we, uh, yeah, when we go ahead, we can just you know give the user an option to um, choose whatever configuration he wants to choose. Okay, so cool. Uh, if we can handle the update of plugins and we've sorted the framework question, the next question would be storing private configuration. Uh, so Oleg expressed concerns regarding a database. So I would just want to get some of the high level technical detail. I'm not asking too many technical questions here because that would be determined as and when we progress to the coding phase. So I would just want high level technical details so that we just don't change, you know, major parts of the workflow during the coding phase. So one more thing was, uh, should we store private configurations? So uh, it would involve, you know, having a database. Uh, so um, should we include a database here or just, you know, uh, just like this feature here, uh, if you see, you can just view the configuration or just, uh, you know, along with the options, we could provide an option to the repository URL and, you know, just make a pull request to that URL uh, in his file or whatever, in his branch. What do you think of that? Mm. Any thoughts on that? If you can connect uh, GitHub uh, with this project, like uh, GitHub integration, uh, maybe you can post the files directly to uh, a private repository. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, may you might need to you might need the personal token of a GitHub yeah, yeah. account. Yep. That 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 was the concern actually. You know, storing personal tokens, and hence we have this entire. Um, uh, the app, the GitHub app, so that we don't, you know, bog down the user with um, that, you know, don't tell the user you give your what and we will put the configuration. Instead of that, just delegate it to the app and the app will do whatever, I mean, do the necessary. So that was my thinking behind it. If you have any other thoughts, I'll, I'll put them down. Okay. Maybe. And the. Uh, it, it's good if you can uh, make a mechanism or interface about uh, how to store it, store it, uh, 
configurations. Maybe the maybe you can go uh, it one or several implementation, and uh, mm -hmm. if someone want to uh, extend extend it, uh, so it will be possible. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, wow. oh, is that an item? Oh, cool. So, <laughs> it's quite good. Yeah, anyways. So, the last uh, topic, that last question that I had for the, this was, should we provide a login OAuth from the start? This was a question that I was thinking on. Uh, should we provide login OAuth from the start or just allow all users to configure? So, if you go to this page, it doesn't ask you for any login or an OAuth and it just lets you configure that. I mean, obviously, this would not be the initial home page. The initial home page would consist of a set of plugins where you can configure. But do you want any user to configure, or do you want us to, you know, provide an authentication? I mean, get, you just use Google or GitHub OAuth, and uh, you know, provide an authentication for every single user. I, I don't know how useful that information would be because you would just get the username. But yeah, what do you think about that? I don't know. I, I, my opinion is we don't need it, but yeah, I'm still open to ideas. I don't, I don't know if we do. Yeah, right now we don't, you're saying we don't need it, right? <laughs> I didn't hear right. it. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't see any reason for having the, you know, I don't see any reason for us uh, having the O. We could just, we would just get the username from the user. So, apparently. You may uh, save the data into like a browser? Yeah, I, I mean, anyways, yeah, we would have to save the user because for client configurations, we would, uh, you know, need to save the, I'll show you an example. So for example, the user is configuring this plugin, okay? Say he enters 45 when he enters 23 and, you know, hello world. And uh, he hits save because he can't submit it right now. He hits save and he wants to configure a different plugin. So all this data has got to go somewhere. So we might need to, you know, obviously this would be stored on the client side using a Redux state or whatever. Mm. But uh, yeah, um, it would be, I don't know, we don't need it actually because any of it would be stored in the browser of every client. So. It would uh, be I good to have. Uh, I don't have too, many, too much uh, experience on the JS uh, framework, but uh, I heard uh, uh, it's pretty easy to, uh, to st store the data into browser, like a uh, uh, how to say, like, uh, send storage or mm -hmm. local storage. Uh, yeah, I mean, I maybe you don't need to, 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 you don't, you maybe don't need to do much things to, right. on this. Right. So I, I think this might be a place where you can highlight the fact that it's easier to deal with the framework because like Rick was saying, yeah that you know, we don't have to try to reinvent something that's already been, we can either use a module for, um, or like another package that someone else has do, do, already, I guess, <laughs> created. Yeah, so, another reason to use a framework. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So just put another there. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, this was, these were some of my major questions. So um, Apart from this one, the one question that I had was uh, regarding this, uh, regarding the pre-built configuration. Yep, so creating a pull request. So there are two ways to do this actually. I have done this currently using the GitHub app. So do you want me to take the token of the user personally or ask the user or provide him an OAuth here so that you know he enters a token or just use an app like this? What do you guys, I mean, obviously we don't have to take this decision now, but um, if it, were to be done that way, we would have to include a uh, GitHub auth at the end. So, any strong opinions on that? Yeah, if you explain how you're going to need authentication. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, mm. I think, uh, yeah, that we could just leave that later. I mean, yeah, just doesn't need to be thought about right now when we get to it. We'll do it. Yeah, so uh, what are the next steps you think? So, uh, the POT is ready. <laughs> it looks it looks pretty okay, but uh, uh, yeah, this, I understood a bit of the workflows and stuff. So what do you think are the next steps? So this is where I ask mentors important advice, advice time. Wait a second. Give me a second. Yeah. So next steps, the most important question. 
I I want to talk about the second question. Um, please go back、uh, a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Let's scroll up a little. Uh,、okay. how to handle updates or plugins? Uh, I know it's、yeah. uh, it's、okay. a little bit difficult to deal with uh, uh many plugins version. Uh, but uh, we uh we might can consider another solution is that uh, uh we don't give give the users a blank uh UI page. Uh, I mean you we give it a simple uh user case like uh, uh like a like a pre-built formula. Uh, if If, uh, the users can、um, change it and uh, uh, change the plugins version, or add a plugin, or change the configuration, then she、uh, then he、uh, can save the the formula to、uh, like.、A, Uh, uh, give it、uh, an、uh, another name, like、uh, maybe the.、Uh, mm, I mean, we we allow the users to modify the formula formula of yeah, configuration, and、exactly. uh, yeah. if there's the conflict between different plugins version, it it is.、Uh, It is more easier to handle it because there are there are not too many difference. Yeah, maybe I let the user for entering a wrong. <laughs> and maybe a wrong. maybe he just、uh, change one plugins version, so、uh, the problem is very obvious. Okay. Yeah. So、uh, actually, yeah. So that's why we've provided the pre-built configurations page. You know,、uh, just provide the user with a、uh, with the、uh, a pre-built configuration, and then he can enter whatever we want. So yeah, obviously that that solution already exists, right? Yes. So the pre-built configuration, maybe we could move this up so that you know,、uh, instead of letting him choose the plugins, you know, we could provide an option that you know we have a pre-built configurations page. You could go and choose your plugin from there, and then he could maybe just choose and edit from from here. So. Yeah, cool. That's a that's another solution. So, agreed. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe start from zero though is 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 nonsense. Like, uh, why why do you want to start from zero? Like,、uh, no, why, why why why、uh, does the user will start to? Oh yeah. Okay. Got to it. To start this like.、Uh, Uh, distribution from zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No zero. In why, my opinion. Why would you build a configuration from zero? Yes. Good, good, good question. Actually, I never thought of this though. Question: Why would you build a configuration from zero?、Exactly. Right. I, okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. I was like, oh yeah, because you know when you install like the when you if you install Django from scratch and you go through the setup wizard. Maybe that's like kind of where we need to go, like like you figure out which that's a good base configuration. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I put it in my proposal as well. You know, you could have the setup wizard install a set of plugins. So, yeah,、mm-hmm. maybe maybe start with the default. Start with the default formula. You're saying maybe default、mm-hmm. configuration. Yeah.、Um, and then and then move move forward. So、uh, before I get the conclusion, I better put it here, so we can maybe start. With our default set of plugins, and then move, and then let the user decide. Cool. Cool. Okay. So that's that's that. Um. Um. Also, one now that you mentioned that, how would the so how would we get the plugin? So I think the update center provides us with the plugin name and the latest version. We just pick up all the plugins from there. I don't know. Does that happen? No, those are I think hard coded. Like, cause they've been kind, of, kind of 
studied to be some of the best one of the ones that are most commonly used by people who are um, using, <laughs> using Jenkins. So you, I don't even think there's a problem with just, if, especially if you're setting up a configuration for people to use later, just default mm -hmm. to using the latest, and then you can just provide them a pre-assembled list of Okay. Cool, cool. Can, okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so some of the next steps. So since we are almost ending, I think there are eight days remaining for the community bonding. Um, this is quite a lot of bonding, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, the next steps would be. Um, so what do you think are the next steps? Would be one of the things would be to. I think I should not talk here. You guys should tell me a bit. So, uh, anything? What do you think should be the next step? Uh, there are two things you might need um, can try to exploit. One thing is about the user login, uh, like uh, integration with GitHub. Uh, so uh, you can storage store store some data to in GitHub. Another one is uh, about uh, how to com compromise, uh, how to uh, com com customize the formula, like uh, uh, users can add a plugin from a de default, uh, default config configuration. Uh, no, no, so you're telling me that should I um, user, can, users. user can either add or, or remove some plugins from uh, a default configuration or from a pre build configuration. So, do you want that in the UI because users can already do that, right? You know, because they can just. Yeah, uh, like the UI. Uh, because. Uh, 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 like you can uh, list all the plugins. Uh, at least you can uh, users can search uh, the plugins by by name or by keyword. Because uh, it's hard to remember the the artifact and the ID of a plugin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you can't expect it. Opportunity. So this I'll, this is an action item that I've got to work on. Cool. I think this involves auth, so I'm just adding auth here so I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Yep. I think that's uh, from you, Kristen. Anything? Oh, okay. So I think that if we're still like in the community bonding phase and like working through a bunch of things, one of the key stakeholders in our this project is going to be um, the configuration as code group. So we're going to, I think, I, I don't know when their office hours are off the top of my head, but it might be worth it to see if we can, you can share this to that channel and kind of get some ideas about, because especially to like a lot of this configuration, hopefully we'll be able to be run with your CJAC or set with your JCASC. Um, sort of like I a feeling configuration configuration as code, but your your Jenkins configuration as code um, set up. So it might be good to kind of share some of the ideas there and see, maybe get some interest from that group. Um, they're a pretty friendly group on Twitter. So you can, I don't know if you're a member of that group. Yep, yep. Uh, I was, yeah, yeah. Um, I okay. think I can join their office hours more. I was, a part of their, uh, uh, the, I forgot, the community bridge uh, initiative. So uh, oh, I worked cool. with Jake. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was yeah. there in their office as well. I know Tim and <laughs> Joseph really well. So yeah, I could definitely get some. Awesome. Yeah, it, it would be fun to share some of this stuff, especially as, since we do want it to be configured, like, you know, to be able to work with configuration code. And um, that would be just easier from that perspective. Yeah, I think their office hours is tomorrow. So I could do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, let's, we can ping the channel and we can start working and be like, hey, I've got this, I don't know if like it's on the agenda, like I've got this kind of 
cool. Like, um, this is hoping they're tying in. Um, maybe showing them a little bit of how the configuration, because the configuration should match. What they're yeah. it's, it's a good way to kind of like tie into some other community, oh. and then you might get some interest, and then that they can, you know, they can provide additional help or just kind of like you know watching the project and you know it's, it's encouraging to have people who are oh yeah i can't wait for this to be working or oh yeah sure i'll i'll test it and you know with a whole bunch of different configurations that you know rick and i might not even <laughs> come up with as a good way of making sure that everything is a little bit more resilient and then can be used. okay definitely yeah so i'll i'll definitely do that so i'll add it to the agenda maybe ping the channel as well yeah yeah um, i don't know what their version i think is on the jenkins uh, yeah, uh, once again, just yeah. give me a minute. Cool. Um, it's especially good if you've already done some stuff with Community Bridge. Um, yeah. There. Like, that way it's like you're. you're okay. Um, it's good to see familiar faces. It's extra. Uh, okay, maybe the link's not working anyway. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, uh, one more thing that we need to do is the. A repository hosting thing so i think we have eight days remaining for the running period would it be good to get the hosting i mean not the hosting i mean get the process started at least so that the hosting team could review and um you know uh, get started with the process for the repository should i just create a, a skeleton of maybe the readme and stuff and then uh, create a ticket for hosting and then let the so that when the community bonding period ends we have a repository what do you think Uh, any opinions, ideas on that? Any strong opinion that I should not do that? <laughs> Maybe yes. create a skeleton. Maybe we can just wait for a while. Uh, okay. Get more feedbacks. Uh, create the repository is pretty easy. The process is not uh, too much. Um, the the point from Christine is great. Is is very uh, very good. Um, get more community bonding is is very helpful. Uh, that impress uh, impre impress me. Uh, maybe you can um, try to have a, uh, like a meetup. You can connect with uh, contact with Olig, uh, uh Show your POC project to to more people. Uh, maybe this is a good way to uh, collect the more feed, feed, feedback. As we can see, you already uh, send the email in, uh, in the mail, mailing list, but still didn't get uh, too much uh, feedback. Yep, so, there is no feedback on that. Empty, though. Yeah. <laughs> the email thread just lies there. So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, but if you, yep. you if you just have a, a meetup to uh, to in, introduce your POC project, uh, I think it, it can it may be more easier to get more feedback. Okay, uh, definitely so. Um, just let me check. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I think. I'll do these action items for the next time. Um, okay, so is there anything that you want me to discuss or go through? Um, I got the suggestion and I got the next steps. Um, it was really helpful this meeting because now I know what to do next. So, uh, yeah, cool. Um, okay, apart from this, anything else you want me to discuss? Um, anything you want me to go over? Anything you're not clear about? Or any questions that you want me to answer? Anything before we just wrap it up? Not from me. Okay. Question anything? Nope, I don't have anything. 
Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so, if at all I get any updates, I mean, if we can make progress, we can have the next meeting as scheduled. If it is, if if at all is any is inconvenient or you guys cannot make it, just tell me. We can have the meeting on the chat with us. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, cool. Um, thanks everyone for attending this meeting. It's been really helpful. Um, I'm stopping my screen share. Uh, yeah. Okay, Christian, you yeah. can uh, send your email in the Gitter channel, so I can put you into the calendar. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, exactly. Uh, also, one more thing, Rick. I think the the the, chan the calendar does not contain the correct URLs for the invites. So, oh, like it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty mad at that. So yeah, we could we could get that fixed. That would be cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. Okay. Oh, Oleg's here. So, uh, uh, Oleg, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Oleg. We cannot hear you. I think it's, you're muted. Yep. Is what about now? Yeah. yeah it's okay. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the link which was provided uh, in a guitar. Um, it doesn't work from my work laptop. It works on the from my personal one, likely because of additional security requirements. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Maybe the link could be updated here. I I'm not too sure why this link and the link that you provide in the chat default. Yeah. So the uh, yeah, yeah. Originally I started from the links in the calendar. They didn't work at all. Then I switched to the link uh, in Gitter. It didn't work as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, apologies for that. I'm very sorry. Um, yeah, maybe this link here could be just updated because Rick shared a different link in the calendar. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, in the chat. So uh, this one is different. So I don't know how does this zoom in ZD CDF and uh, work. So if you guys, I, obviously, I don't have access to the calendar. So uh, you guys can update this link. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are updated each and later. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, yep. That's about it. Then, um, yep. Actually, we just uh, finished discussing most of the things. Or like, so, if you need any yeah. updates on that, yeah, we could do that next time. Cool. I'm stopping my screen share. Okay. Is that it then? Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thanks. It looks good so far. Yeah. Okay. yeah thank you. So I'll try uh, to join on the meeting uh, next Tuesday if you handle that. Yeah, so yeah. On no, Thursday, unlikely, but I will be at the platform seek. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I was hoping to join the um, the JCAS office hours because Christian suggested uh, that I demonstrate the POC there and to get some additional feedback. So. Um, I'll be joining that. So maybe if you need a, maybe most of what we covered today, uh, maybe I could demonstrate for a few minutes over there. That, that, that's, that's about it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's end. Yeah, I think I think we're. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, thank I think you, everyone. All right, talk to you later. Bye bye. 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 bye.